let's get a drone up. So how about we go through a few um, fishing drone basics. Um, every time I go fishing I learn something new. So I'm on my own today. And I'll show you how to set up the uh, 2S first up. All the bits and pieces that I have here. Little drone fishing bag. It's the primal bag from BCF. And in the top here, I have my laptop. Just uh, bits and pieces I use for charging. More toggies. I need those. GoPro goes in here. That's GoPro 8. GoPro 10 in there and all my GoPro batteries are in here. The recharging system is behind me and in this bag in the front instead of tackle I have all of my gear, my vlogging gear uh, inside it. So first up what do we need to find? We need to make sure we have our fishing gear. So, something to hook the line up into. It's called a Gannet Sport. But this thing here is about $150. Depends on where you get it from. I just got it from Kogan. Um, it has an adjustment there for tightening the amount of tension on the line and this little piece here because it, it goes on a, several of the Mavic drones is just a spacer to help fit it to the Mavic 2. So it fits the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 2S or Mavic Air 2, 2S just like so and uh, all you do is pull that band over it and A little bit of tension in it. And run off the help. Like so, and what I normally do is I just put that over the on-off button. I don't want that going off while you're flying, of course. And uh, fortunately with the Mavics, they're not as easy to turn on and off as just pressing the button. You've got to press it short and quickly and then press and hold for a few seconds and then let go and it turns on and off. So it does go over the light here, which doesn't matter too much. We don't we're not allowed to fly these at night anyway. And the sensors either side. So that's pretty much it. When I want to change the battery, I just unclip that carefully comes off. So putting it back on. So I just straighten it up. Yep. It's ready to go. Just put this over here. their controller and in our controller I've actually got a triple tech screen and I love these because they're a, they have a thousand nits of light which a nit is how much light a lit candle can actually emit in one square meter so this is 1000 nits the uh, iPhone that I have um, is the same the challenge with that is once it warms up or heats up, it tends to dull down and you end up not being able to see the screen very well. And anybody that has a phone uh, is aware of that. But these just stay bright. So they're fantastic, they're heavy, they're military grade. Um, so very durable. The battery life's very good, but it is heavy. So you can, if you want, use a neck or a lanyard. Put that on you have to have a lanyard attachment on here, which I do have, I just don't use it. This is my range extender. 
So uh, that goes on there. And there's a special adapter that this goes into that I just got off Amazon uh, Prime. No, not Amazon Prime. I just got it off Amazon to um, hold that in place. And that's, oh, that's around 13 to $15. It's about the same. This is a quite a pricey but worth the money, over $1,000. And of course the controller comes with the drone. So let's get it all switched on and uh, as if we're going to fly this thing out with fishing line on it. So first of all, one press and then hold, let go. This here, top button. It's Android by the way, so I am I can use Apple and uh, Android. I'm using the Apple phone there. I've got my GoPro 10. GoPro 8 over there and um, open the app. So that's the DJI app. Open that up. I've got a longer um, cord attachment and it's a USB C to USB C attachment and uh, quite durable. And I think I've got that off eBay, so I get most stuff off eBay, but I do use Amazon at times. Um, and you can see that's connected and it's just a matter of switching the drone on one click and then push making sure that we're not touching any of the propellers it's just setting itself it's an easy make sure the blades are, it doesn't matter too much but I have the blades open to the stress on the drone when you switch it on and that is in place now I've already pre-tensioned this but I'll show you uh, how to do that now. Okay. All I do is flip the bail. There's the hooks. Okay, obviously you've got to be careful with those. Let's just hook, Let's just hook those there. Thank you. And what people do is, there's all different ideas. Um, I tend to use braid for this type of system. With a Swell Pro, for instance, um, it has a uh, automatic release, a mechanical release. Whereas this one here is uh, pressure that we uh, apply to the drone in flight uh, release. So it's a tensioned type of release. So with a that other type of release, the uh, mechanical release, you can use any type of line, it doesn't really matter, but I've always found braid, you can just feel a little bit more because there's, there's not as much um, stretch. What I find with this type of release is using the monofilament line, as you often try to take it out and release it from the drone, um, it stretches. So, the, so it doesn't actually release and the, I've had an instance where the drone said uh, wind, it's high winds and what it wasn't the wind, it was the fact that it was pushing against this stretching line. Um, so it was a bit of a lesson in that, we had to accelerate fast, really hold it in place and then um, try to get it off and it was quite difficult. So now I only use braid with this type of system um, and because it just has no stretch. So it just always, always releases straight away. Now, with um, I see online some people have three meters of uh, line in between the drone and the bait. Some people have ten if you want to troll a lure or um, drop a bait and just sort of place it, and then the fish takes it and then it pulls it out of the drone. Um, that's a, not a good system. But more often than not, all I do is just do a short. I don't have really heavy baits on, maybe it, I'm, I could put a, a, a light bait on I guess and it could weigh a couple of hundred grams max, that would be a big one, but um, and with a sinker you know you might put a big sinker on, but these things can carry, they, they've been shown to carry a kilo, uh, but realistically I wouldn't go any more than 300, um, turn that off, 300 grams. It's up to you, but uh, they are a small drone. And how big a bait do you really need? So all I do with this, for me, is I just do a bit of a granny knot. So I just flip, 
goes around, through, just like that. And then this knot here goes into the drone. So I grab the drone and this line, it's much easier with a second person, but I can stretch that and click that in there. You'll see now that's in place. So when this lifts up, there's your loop to your fishing rod and here is your hanging bait just here and then when the when you want to release that you just pull on the line with the rod and it comes out if I want to adjust that tension if it's too tight or too loose I just adjust it here so the reason I like that system is when you're winding back in with tension, this happens. It just pulls and comes undone. So your line's not damaged and you're not dragging any sort of knot through the water. Probably wouldn't matter anyway, but it just seems like a neater system, particularly when it comes in through the eyelet later on. So simple as that for hooking up the fishing rod. Flip that bale back down something to be mindful of and uh, this happens a lot when you're drone fishing and people think it's easy just just to cast a line out with a drone well firstly if you cast out 400 even 250 meters plus it's a lot of work winding it in so it is hard work on a perfect day like today um, if you look at the, the water That's absolutely perfect weather. Fraser Island at its best. Is there a better place on the planet? Absolutely beautiful. So on a day like today, it's a lot easier. I probably wouldn't have to cast out more than maximum 200 meters. And I could go 200 meters um, generally and not worry about drag, etc. here. Now I tend to like, this is a full tide that you just saw there. It's a low, a, what we call low high tide. And <clears throat> there'll be, at the moment, little drag because it's, it's at the turning point. I actually prefer fishing on a, an outgoing tide. I always have. And the reason being is it tends to pull your line straight out, whereas an incoming tide will throw your line to the side and something uh, that happens when you're drone fishing. You cast the line out 400 metres and within five minutes it's over that way and you've got to wind in or that way 400 metres um, and with you know no result. You can use a, a bigger sinker and um, I'll show you a version of that. show you because I can't find them. So I have some sinkers that are this size <clears throat> and they have some uh, oh, steel coming off of them, uh, stainless steel coming off of them and uh, some of them have um, just like a, a really thick nylon coming off of them. And the idea of that is that it digs into the sand and the line doesn't move. The challenge I find with that is trying to bring it back in. It's, it's just too much. So. These are, these are some of my favourite lines. I, I tend to just use a ball sinker, uh, but if I'm having a lot of trouble, I, t I like these ones. They tend to dig in enough um, and easy to use. The difference is you, you do have to change your rig. This, be, this goes on the end of your line and you sinker up here and then you just tie your hooks in. You can go one hook or usually two hooks for this type of system and then cast the line out. So, at any bait and tackle shop for those. Hard work, thousand metres of line, so imagine casting. So if I was chasing tuna, um, tuna often are sort of 500 to 700 metres offshore. Um, still gives me 500 to 300 metres. 
of line um, to fight the tuna if I wanted to. Uh, you know if you catch a tuna you're generally going to be on uh, in the battle for a couple of hours. I don't like fishing for sharks or anything like that, I'd rather leave those. Um, I like videoing them but not catching them. Um, my main thing I like to catch is snapper and squire and um, sort of smaller pelagics, so and mackerel, etc. But uh, I don't use that too often. What I prefer to use is, this is my favourite reel actually, is the Saragosa 25,000. I've got a Saragosa uh, 10,000 that holds around 300 metres of line, 270 to 300 metres of line. Um, 30 to 50 pound braid. This has 50 pound on it. The other one has 30 pound braid on it. Uh, this 25,000 holds 600 metres of line. Find that's a nice amount. I cast out 200 to 250 meters, no worries, and I still have plenty to play. Um, <clears throat> we'll battle the fish, or I can send it out 400 meters, and I'm yet to run out of line. One of the challenges. <coughs> So one of the challenges with these, this line and using braid, maybe mono, but I think more so braid, is if you get a snag out at 250-300 metres and you're pulling that line and then you break it off and then you wind it in, what happens is there's a, it, 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 it gets really tight in that area and the line cuts in and then becomes a sticking point. So you wind it all the way in, you hook your drone, up, you're flying your bait out and then it hits that sticking point and you lose your bait. Well, you don't lose it, but the line pulls out of the drone and into the water and, you know, you've, you're trying to cast at 400 metres or you're chasing the fish and it came off at um, where you were snagged last and sometimes that snag point might be 100 metres and it's frustrating. You've got to go back, get that, pull your line in, set it all up and go again. Um, so what I do is when I know I've just pulled off a snag, I stop and I just release that and then I wind it in. So just have to remember to do that. So that's that. Audio. Let's, uh, I'll show you how to send the line up. Now I'm under my um, 270 degree awning here and these drones, they, have a, they take off and they generally go up about one meter. Um, this this has top sensors. I've got a, a Mavic Air 2 I generally use for fishing. This one I use for um, looking for um, schools of fish or doing, you know, looking at dolphins and all sorts of things out there. It's got a slightly a better cam much better camera on it. But um, I'm just going to demonstrate with this one because I'm going to fly that out after anyway. So I'm going to leave that on and let's set it up as if we're going to do a flight. Okay. Okay, let's get this drone flying and I've got no bait on it, I just want to show you um, attaching the line and taking off. So, switching our drone on, switching our remote control on, our triple tech screen. I'm flying these things on a cliff and you might be 20 metres in the air, so when you're wanting to get close to the water, you need to know 
because when you're out to sea it's a bit hard to tell. So I often would fly out, drop down to the beach sand off the cliff and that would tell me negative 20 metres and then when I rose up again and from that I knew okay, I was within one or two metres. So if I went negative 21 I'd be in the water. So when I went out to sea, flying out to sea, I'd, I'd fly at you know, 50 metres in the air which I knew was 30 metres and when I wanted to come down a bit closer to whatever I was viewing, um, I knew I could get down to negative 10 and I'd be 10 metres from what I was looking at. So the wind's dropped right off, the water is absolutely glass, so we're going to go and have a... Uh, I'll just show you this and then I'm going to fly out because there's bound to be fish out there uh, right on the high tide. It's pretty much close to the ebb tide now. So, okay, drone set up, I put the line in. I'm ready to fly. Uh, it's saying take off permitted. I don't really want to take off under here. Um, this is a brand new drone, so um, I did lose a drone in the water a few weeks ago just here, but it was a uh, Phantom 4, uh, one of the old models, and um, it was playing up, so probably wasn't a good idea to fly it over the water in the first place. Never had any trouble with these drones. It was always the first time. Okay, so. Let's get this drone in the air with the line on. And I'm just going to, normally you'd be out on the beach doing this, but there you go, you see how easy that clipped out. So what I can do is tighten that up. A little bit tougher for it to clip out. One's not tangled up. Let's move this this way. Bring this in. Okay, that's locked in. There's the line. Hooks. Okay, they would have normally a bait on. Start the drone. Okay, now if you look there, you'll see the drone has the fishing line attached, and the drone's telling me that it's a little bit close to things. And that I'm just going to move it away from here a bit more so it quietens down. Go up. There you go. And we'll just turn this so you can see the drone. All right. We'll just take this out a little bit. Put the bail arm flipped, and it's as simple as that. Well, it's not simple, but you can see I'm being nice and careful. Um, drone's nice and stable, fishing line's kept down low. You, you keep a little bit of um, tension on the line, ideally. So let's just flip this back so you can see what I'm talking about. Stop that there. Okay. So as I'm sending the line out, ideally you'd have someone holding the rod, but I'd have this in a bait, um, a rod holder, have tension on the line, and then just press forward and send it out. Just like that, nice and simple. Uh, I like to, as I'm going out, just make sure it's going up a little bit as well. Um, and generally I'll fly to around that 20 metre, 30 metre mark. Now the drone's trying to go up a little bit here and that's because it has line attached. So I'm gonna flip the bail and I'm going to show you how to release this drone. So you're flying and there you go, bait released. Simple as that. So I flip the bail, the 
accelerated forward and the boat dropped out. And then I just returned to home. So, and with this, I can actually, well, actually I'll do it in here and I'll show you how noisy it can be because it's going to be, well, this one may not even let me do this. So what I'm going to do is just, I'll go in here I'll see if I can turn everything off. Obstacle avoidance, so I can, I'll just switch it off. That's what I'm going to do. So, obstacle avoidance off. Let's see what happens when I bring this back. and get this fishing rod out of the way. See if I can bring it back in here. I can actually, you can land these in your hand um, while you're sitting in your car. Obviously high risk. Let's just see if it behaves itself. Very stable. Notice how still I kept my hand. Now yeah, the challenge, I don't recommend doing that when you've got a, a warning, but what people do is they do that and this will move up like that uh, and you've got a chance of losing your drone. So just be careful with that. Turning everything off. I'm going to go for a fly because this water, check this out, for magnificent. just perfect water. So let's go and see if we can see some sharks and uh, hopefully a whale would be nice or a dolphin.